It's gonna be the goofiest footage ever. Goofiest footage ever. See what I did there? It's called viewer retention. All right, for those of you who just want the transition, all you have to do is go to my buy me a coffee page, pay for it, put in zero if you like, click download. Then what you do, you'll have to open up a zip folder. For the zip folder, there'll be a few things in there. There'll be the end screen transition, which I've added in. There'll be the setting files, and there'll also be some MP4s in case you're not using DaVinci Resolve. For the MP4s, all you have to do is remove the green. There's the normal uh, four layer one. There's also a single layer, which you can just drag and drop on and use as many layers and repeats as you want. To get the setting file in, all you have to do is drag and drop it over into the effects library under video transitions. Then once you have it, you can just go look for it, drag and drop it onto your footage. I suggest changing it to five seconds. That's the normal time it takes. There's the wobble start. You can change how much wobble there is to begin with. You can change the delay. That's how out of control it gets over time. If you set the delay to maximum and the start to zero, you basically get circles. If you do it the other way, you get uh, kind of this funky mess. If you go to wobble adjust, that's just a seethe. That'll change the shape of your circles. And then of course you have the positions where you can change the center of where all the circles are and you have your layers. There are four repeating layers and you can change the delay on them. If you put them all to zero, of course you just have one layer. If you wanna go ahead and open up this in Fusion, go ahead and click on the little Fusion icon. Then you can just go over it and you can open up the group and change any of the parameters. It's all there for you to use. And for all you lovely people who actually want to learn how to do this yourself. Okay, so let's start building this thing. I'm going to try and go a little bit quickly, but I will explain all the steps along the way. All right, so for the first thing, I need a circle, so I need an ellipse. And instead of using a background like we'd normally use, I'm going to use a fast noise to get that texture look. So go ahead and add in a fast noise, add in a transform, Go ahead and duplicate that fast noise, and then we need a displace. And then go ahead and just hook them all up like this. Up to border width, we're gonna change that to 0.1. Go ahead and uncheck solid. We want our height to be the same as our width, so go ahead and right click on height, go to expression, go ahead and grab this plus and just drag up to the width, or type in width. We're going to go ahead and keyframe this set. So at the beginning, zero. On frame one, we'll make it 0.5, 0 0.05 rather. And on 299, this is going to be 0.7. Let's go with the values for now. We can, you can always change them later. I tried this a lot of different ways. All right, on the fast noise, go ahead and change contrast to two, change brightness to one, scale will be at five, and then we're gonna use this as our color. So go back up, go from noise to color. We're gonna change it from two color to a gradient. So we want that red and black. We have black there, we can go ahead and click on this white and just change it to a nice red. And if we just click and drag up, we can see our preview, what we have going on right now. Go ahead and uncheck, use size and aspect. We want to change both of these to 1.5. And we'll go ahead and move the position to 0.25. That'll be our center circle and we'll base our left circle and right circle off of this. For fast noise, the only thing you're going to go change in this is going to be the seethe rate. Change it to 0.1. Once we're on displace, change the offset to negative 0.2. And we're going to put in an expression for the refraction strength. So put in 0.5 plus time over 600. I made this changeable using a custom tool in my setup. I'm not going to do that here, but you can do it if you want. You can see the end of it and the beginning of it. It's a nice wobble effect. My mistake at the beginning just changed one value. We want the border width to be 0 0.01 and not 0 0.1. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and start naming stuff so we can figure out what's what. This will just help us keep track of stuff as we go through it. So what I'm going to do is going to highlight the ellipse, hit F2, and I'm just going to change it to R1 for the first red circle and C for center. I'm going to do the same thing for all the other nodes except the two fast noise nodes. I want to differentiate the two, so I'm going to change one to texture and the other one to FN. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy and paste a bunch of instances. So Control C and Control Shift V. And we're going to do this three times. 
This is going to consist of a red outer ring, a black inner ring, another red ring, and then an alpha. Now that we have our instances, we're just going to change a few things on each of them. First, we're going to go and click on border width, right click, go to D instance, and this will be need to change to 03. And then we're going to go down to width, and we're going to D instance that, D instance them both actually. And then width, we're going to put in an expression for this. The expression is going to link it to the width of the first ellipse, minus 0 0.04. So I need to put in ellipse underscore R1 underscore C dot width minus 0.04. This instance is going to be our second red ring. What we're going to, um, the only thing we need to change on here is put in the expression. So D instance both, go ahead and put in an expression to width. And then for our final one, which will be our alpha, we want to de-instance the border width. We're going to de-instance the solid portion, check solid, and then we're going to change the border width to negative 0.07. And that should complete all our circles. Now, we can't really see them because we need to merge them all together to be able to see the whole composite. So let's go ahead and build that. Okay, to build a viewer, what we're going to need is we're going to need a bunch of merge nodes and a bunch of wireless nodes. So let's get in three different merge nodes, hook them in with the center being the final composite. Now we're going to add in some wireless nodes. But before I do all of that, I'm going to go ahead and rename these so that they're a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get rid of the instance, change these center ones, B for black. Go ahead and rename the other nodes accordingly. Pause the video if you need to. Here is my final setup. Okay, now that I have everything renamed properly, I can go ahead and start making these wireless nodes and it'll be much easier to put in names. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. I'm gonna need wireless nodes for my alpha, for my black, for my two red circles. And I went ahead and put C at the end because I'm gonna have other viewers for the other two circles. I went ahead and renamed my merge node so it's easier to understand what's going on. We're gonna merge the black over top of the first red ring. We're gonna merge the alpha over top of the second red ring. And then we're gonna merge the alpha over top of that. So now we have everything set up, we just need to put in the inputs. So go ahead and click on the wireless node input, which is just going to be the name of the displace node. Displace B and do the same for the other wireless nodes. All right, now we've got all the displaces and we've merged them over top. So let's go ahead and see a result. All right, you notice it's big red blob. That's because we haven't changed any of the colors yet texture for your plaque, you'll need to de-instance this, change it to two color, make it black. Our alpha, de-instance it, change it to two color, and we're going to change this one to green. If you run into an error where one texture ends up changing another, make sure you go through it and just try and de-instance as much as you can. Sometimes you'll need to click on the color group and de-instance the color group. You notice the center is an alpha. We're using green. We're going to use a keyer later on to transform that into an alpha. We can make it an alpha now. It'll just show the rings underneath it. Scrub through your animation. Make sure everything's looking okay. This gradient's looking a little bit off, so I'm going to go to the texture. I might just add in a few extra points. Have a few more points, and then I can change the offset and get a nicer look for that. So now just go ahead and copy and paste two more instances, one for the left and one for the right. We'll do that for now, we'll have to change a little bit later. So you can go ahead and leave it like this if you want. If you want to chain all of these circles together, so you only have to do one control, each of these will have to be copy and pasted individually. You can't just highlight them and paste them, otherwise you just get an instance of the first one and it doesn't work. You'll have to highlight them each individually and then replace the copy that you have there. All right, now that I have everything copied over, I've replaced everything with instances except for the transform. I've gone ahead and renamed everything as well. I've also made 
I also built these wireless viewer nodes for the other two circles for the left and the right. Of course, linking them to the correct displace node. Now that we have this, now it's time to start merging everything together. To do this, we're going to need to build something a lot like our viewers. We're going to use some wireless nodes to combine the different colors. We're going to combine the red layers, the black layers, the second red layer, and then the alpha. So down here, I have the alpha of the left-hand side, the displace. I have the right-hand displace alpha, and then I'm merging those together. Then I'm merging those on top of the center alpha. So I'm combining all three of those, and I'm using time speed nodes to delay them so that the circles aren't all growing at the same rate. For the top, I'm delaying it by 30 frames. The second circle on the right, I'm delaying it by 60 frames. I'm just merging those on top of the center. Take those and I'm going to paste instances for the red, for the black, and for the second red ring. Nothing's going to change on these. They're all going to be exactly the same. The only thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to rename them and get rid of that instance and I'm going to name them for black, red, etc. All right, I've gone ahead and renamed everything. As you can see, you can go ahead and pause the video if you'd like and rename them the way I did, or you can name them whatever you want. Uh, I've gone ahead and also merged them together the same way I did for the viewers. I've merged the alpha over top of the uh, red two, and I've merged the black over top of red one, and then I've merged them together. And as you can see, it doesn't quite look right. I made an error at the beginning, which I'm going to fix now. I didn't change one of the alpha values all the way up, so I'm just going to go up to that alpha on my center, and I'm going to crank that back up, and that will fix that issue. So if you made the mistake like I did, that's just how you fix it. All right, now it's time to link everything together, and this was a little bit of trial and error to get this working right. But from that merge, we're going to go ahead and merge that down over top of a green background just so we can take out all the green and not have that weird alpha in there. We need to have it green. We'll take the delta key here to remove it. And then we just have these time speed nodes to do extra layers. So we have delayed layers. So we have four layers of differing three circles merging together. And then we have a green background merged back in underneath of that. And you're probably wondering why I merged that back in together. And the real reason is it just doesn't seem to work without it. Um, and I think the real reason is because of these time speed nodes, since the time speed nodes are pushing out that clip further and further, there's nothing there right at the beginning except for that first um, layer. By putting that background underneath it, there's something to register uh, something earlier on in the footage. You could probably get away with just adding another background in there. You don't have to actually merge the green one back in there. Um, but I remove it again later anyway. So then I merge in my other two pieces of footage. I use that with a dissolve node and I add in a little bit of waviness because in the uh, transition in Persona 5 there's a little bit of waviness in the background footage. So I have that going in. I'm removing that green background with another delta keyer and then merging it all back together. You notice that size is a little bit off. You may have to resize your footage going into this. So be aware of that. It's just easy enough to grab a resize node and try and drop it in. That's fixed. And that's really all there is to it. There's a lot of copying, pasting. There's a whole lot of renaming things just to keep stuff correct. But it's not super complex once you break it down. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Let me know if these tutorials are helpful or if you really just want the transition.